This is a Stories to be Told podcast. All extracts are taken from titles within the Stories to be Told series. Copyright Tracy D. Williams 2020. Welcome back everyone to another episode. This is the Stories So Far Part 2. I'm Tracy D.W., founder and creator of Stories To Be Told. And as I said from my previous podcast, I'm going to spend the month of January dedicating both episodes to the stories. The previous podcast, I shared some anecdotes and some extracts from the first two stories that I've published, Caribbean Wind and Caribbean Rush. And the focus of this podcast is to have a little read of the next two stories that have been published. And they're titled um, Nights at the Round Table, the Berlin Conference, 1884, and Gone with the Wind, Macmillan's Speech for Change. Now, just to recap from my last podcast, I talked a little bit about my vision Um, and also my brand story, how I came up with the idea for stories to to be told and and what motivated me, and also said a little bit about the the pedagogy or the science behind um, what I was doing and, and those questions and aspects of the work that I needed to consider in order to get myself focused and to identify who my learner was, who I was writing for, and so on. In this particular episode, I want to elaborate on that and just give you some some reflections about some other processes that I, I went through to help me with identifying what stories to be told was all about. And just to mention about brand design and brand analysis and how important Um, those processes were you know they really helped in terms of defining my vision my brand story my aims and rationale um, what they call USP the unique selling point and defining a particular target audience and how to facilitate their ability to learn about the subject or topic because if you don't have a target audience if you if you're doing something and you, you don't know who it's for what's the point so brand design and brand analysis was really really helpful and as a result at the back of every story I've added a learning journey a chronology and a workout to help broaden your vocabulary so looking at stories to be told through brand design and analysis it really helped me to develop more of a business mindset and look at something that I would look at and perceive as an activity and turn it into a product. So that's what brand design and analysis has really helped me to do. And learning all about brand analysis has really complemented my educational experience. And I really would recommend it to anyone who is thinking about developing and and marketing or promoting a product or a service because it really helps you to put your finger on the pulse and clarify what it is you are trying to promote, what your product or service is, who it's for and most importantly why you're doing it. So there's lots of brand analysis and brand awareness courses out there. I thoroughly recommend it. Okay, It's time to read some stories. Let's um, share an extract with you. So uh, this extract is taken from Knights at the Round Table, the Berlin Conference, 1884, and it's from chapter one. I do like to give each chapter within my stories um, a, a subheading, a subtitle. And in this particular story, I've structured the titles around a play so I, the titles are uh, I've given a, a prelude and interlude and final act and, and and so forth um so this is chapter one this is the prelude and just off note people who have read my stories have noticed that the style of the stories are fairly consistent but to be honest I had a hard time 
trying to define the genre. It's it's a story, but they're not fiction. It's fact, but it's a story. It's history, but it's not historical fiction. But the one thing for sure is this. It is poetry and a narrative. So I describe the work as a poetic narrative and that's how I came to use this term and, and how I like to refer to them. So this is the next poetic narrative and, and this is about the scramble for Africa and the Berlin Conference of 1884. And it's complemented by the third podcast episode, The Pink Map Project, The Ultimate Paradox. So here we go. Chapter One. The Prelude. It's a tale of sadness, woe and beguile, of how the motherland became torn. Through the ruthless, calculative drive to drain her of her riches, jewels and moors. Apart from its ports in the north and south, it was relatively unexplored. But acknowledged for its natural resources and human population as a large labour source. King Leopold of Belgium and Henry Morton Stanley wrote the prelude to this play. When they explored the Congo Basin, too many others felt left out of the game. Stanley's charting of the Congo River formed the boundaries, drew the lines. To mark out what the English, French and Portuguese had all desired. First German Chancellor Otto von Bismarck led the charge and bestowed to each their role. There was only one aim, to eliminate all minor powers and indigenous control. It's quite an ominous kind of feel to that. So that is Knights at the Round Table, the Berlin Conference, 1884, taken from Chapter 1, The Prelude. I really like to use a subtitle that reflects the theme of that particular piece of text. So I hope you enjoyed that. And feel free to comment, review, tell me what you think about them. Let's move. The last extract I'm going to read is from Gone with the Wind. Macmillan's speech for change. You know, I was amazed at the response that I got about this particular podcast and the the focus of the podcast, which was all about Harold Macmillan, Prime Minister, British Prime Minister Harold Harold Macmillan, and the speech that he gave in Accra, Ghana, and then in South Africa in 1960. And it was given at a time when Britain was really contemplating breaking up its empires and giving its colonies independence. The Second World War had not um, been that long ago and Britain didn't have any money left. Running an empire was just not feasible anymore and there were other rising superpowers across the world such as the US and Russia and China who were also looking now to dominate and build empires of their own. So Britain didn't think it was feasible, not just for those reasons, but there were a number of other reasons. And this speech, um, I felt, was important enough to dedicate a podcast to. And this is the story that that podcast complements. So I'm going to read from chapter three, and the chapter's called A Question of Balance. The only way to keep imperial rule was to undergo an evolution. Britain saw this as the antidote to the threat of revolution. So devolution was the path that Britain had to take. The 1960s saw many countries depart from her embrace. Maurice Harold Macmillan, 1st Earl of Stockton, born in 1894. Known to his friends as Super Mac, he was cool, calm and unflappable. As Prime Minister in 1960, 
he recognised the dilemma he was in. There was nationalistic pride and consciousness in Africa growing from within. There you have it. Chapter 3, A Question of Balance from Gone with the Wind, Macmillan's Speech for Change. There's a little taste of, of two more books. I hope you've enjoyed them. Before I finish the podcast, just a reflection on one of the other things that has been key for me when writing these stories. And that was to try and achieve what I have, what I've come to call narrational clarity. And that means just simply for me, making sure that the content is appropriate and sufficient in conveying what I wanted the reader to to know about and and to be able to tell it in a way that is understandable, especially for younger readers who are still developing their reading experiences and their vocabulary. This need for narration or clarity, as I call it, has meant oftentimes that I've had to sacrifice the length of a story in order to retain this clarity. I don't believe there's any point in writing at length and putting in a whole lot of information just for the sake of it. If there's no clarity, no cohesion and no story to tell, what would be the point? And as with any writing process, you know, there's there's a lot of moving parts and a lot of things to consider. But what well, one of my concerns was that, that these stories wouldn't be long enough. But people who have read them have actually said that they're quite highly condensed with a lot of information. A colleague of mine who had read an author copy that I had loaned to them said, you know what, Tracy, you pack a lot into these stories. And I know a lot more now about the subject after reading the story than what I knew before I'd read it. And, you know, I looked at her and I just replied, well, thanks ever so much. And that's exactly what I intended when writing the stories. So that's a little bit about my idea about my writing process and the decisions that I've had to make. So there you go. That's it for another podcast. Um, Again, a little taste of the next two stories. I hope you've enjoyed those readings and I hope it will inspire you to go online, listen to a sample, download a sample, make a purchase. And as always, love your feedback and your comments. So I would love to know what you think. That's it for now. Thank you so much for listening and thank you for your continuing support with these podcasts. Don't forget to share, share the love using the hashtag STBT podcasts and as always it is a pleasure and a privilege to share my stories with you in this podcast and I encourage you to either begin or continue your own learning journey. So, History is a matter of fact or perspective. I hope you've enjoyed listening to some of my perspectives in this podcast. Thanks so much for listening and see you on the next page.